Hi, my name is Tete Laudares and we are here to explain fashion in a very uncomplicated way. And today we are going to be answering the question, why is Louis Vuitton so expensive? Let's hit the road. Well, first of all, who is this guy? Christian Louboutin was born in Paris and at the age of 14, he became an apprentice to a very well-known shoemaker of the time, which was like the 80s and the 80s, called Charles Jourdain. Charles Jourdain did innovate quite a lot by that time, and the boy whose father um, worked in the train industry, his father always taught him that you have to walk thing in the same direction, and it, that you have to always look forward as you're doing things just like trains, and therefore he said that he took this for his life and that he kept on just, you know, kind of going with the flow, but just keep uh, aiming ahead and going. He learned a lot about shoe construction, and in the 1990s, more precisely in 1991, after also working as a landscape designer, thinking about dealing with antiques or architecture. He met some friends who told him, hey, you were happy when you were working with Charles Jourdain. Why don't you do your own thing? Really? Yeah. Okay. Having that said, he was with this friend kind of an art dealer, antique store. And the friend said, well, there is this store right here in Gal uh, Galerie Passage, Galerie Verrododa, and you could rent it. So he did it. He rented this shop at Galerie Verrododa, also called, people, they call these galleries a passage because it, it makes your way through like one street to another. So it's a kind of a passage. It's more or less like the grandmother of malls. It would be where people would go to buy in the past, like in the 19th century, and everything was kind of covered. So they could still stroll around in winter or rainy days. It is there at Rue Jean-Jacques Rousseau. It exists still nowadays, you can go and visit, that he created his first collection. And right there, he put the first flats that were written love. Recently, he made it a re-edition of this. And I don't remember exactly who it was, but someone famous loved it and bought it. Well, you know, these famous people like influencers and all, people start imitating. Where did you get that? Well, so everybody started talking. Imagine being talked in Paris. Of course, he was Parisian. He is Parisian. And people were talking about him and about these flats. So he made another collection. Well, things being said, it's true that one day he was looking at a pair of shoes, something like this. He was looking at a pair of shoes. He grabbed it and he looked at it and he found it pretty cool. But like every other shoe, when you look at it at the front, wow, it's great but he wanted something else. But which was the something else is that he was really in doubt. So he kept looking. He told me, because I met him, he, 
put the shoe somewhat like that, and that he looked at the back, trying to analyze. You know, these people when they when they deal with with shoes, they kind of want to see you passing by. That's the big hit of the thing. And then, all of a sudden, he looked at his secretary, and she was like doing her nails. Very, very quickly, he grabbed her nail polisher and painted it. He painted the sole. Ditto. What happened next was that he found out that with this pair of shoe, the person, not exactly this, but the person would be seen from the front and from the back. Bingo. That is exactly what he wanted. He wanted people to be noticed. Because, of course, when we're talking about Louboutin shoes, it's important for you to know, and he says it, it's not a running shoe, it's not a walking shoe, it's a stand-up shoe. But that will make you stand out everywhere you go. He is known for bringing back the stiletto pumps. Stiletto, this very thin hill that inside has a metal piece. Yes. People had long forgotten about these, but he brought them back. They can be 10, they can even be 12 inches, which is somewhat like, ah, oh, but the favorite of a lot of girls because it elongates your body. It elongates your legs. And evidently, as he says, you can slouch when you're wearing sneakers, but when you're wearing high heels, you have to hold yourself and then you have to hold your body. And that gives you a nice silhouette. Talking about silhouette, um, he likes to work a lot on this, like the decote, they say, which would be like the, the depth over here. And when you see like the little tiny, you know, the little joints of your toes when they're exactly meeting your feet, he feels that that's like a, a v-neck of the feet so that you can kind of peak something sexy. Well, I brought some shoes for us to go on exploring this world and getting to know why is it so expensive. All right, I'm just picking, picking them out of the blues. So I really don't know what is in the box. The production got them for me. And we are going to be talking about them. Oh, here we go. And now there is the little, but this time with, I think it's eight, right? This is not six. I think it's eight. Well, one thing we were really going to have to talk about, I mean, one thing we really have to mention are the spikes. Christian Louboutin has been making a lot of spike ap applications in all his shoes, which kind of made them recognizable as well as the sole. Yes, I've used it. Talking about usage, he says that every one of us has our own foot imprints. So he finds it beautiful for you to have your soul a little bit ravened because he says it shows your identity, your personality, the way you walk, the way you step, the way you, you know, it's like when you step a foot on things, you know what you're talking about. This is your foot imprint. It's only yours. It's unique. Nobody's got a, a foot imprint just like you. So it is a way of making it yours, really. Here at the bottom, it says 
made in Italy. Well, French designer, shoes made in Italy, as he says, yes, good shoes, excellent shoes, luxury shoes are made in Italy. Why? Because they have the expertise. If you, even if you go to the Metropolitan Museum in New York, you're going to see they have some pinellas there. They have been, Italians have been doing this since Renaissance. They really have the control, the expertise of the construction of the leather, how to bend things, how to mold them, and how to sew. This is sewn so beautifully because if you see, this is, I hope you see it, this is a kind of a lace, and lace is really soft. And you see, it does not, as I try to scratch my finger here, it does not move. And I can see no glue. It's really uptight. Another thing, to have the exact measurement of these soles, for them to hit this part of your, this heel, this part of your feet, it's really hard. Mind you that also this curve, it's very much studied. Let's get another pair of shoes. Now, we started talking about heels. Heels can be something very, very exquisite. And this time, we have a really exquisite heel. Imagine finding the perfect math solution to get your balance on this curvy heel. Hard, huh? Plus, finding out all the asymmetry that this pair of shoes require without having that slouchy feeling that it's coming out of your feet when you walk. It does not happen. I can assure you, I've used it. I've worn it. <gasps> wow. Can I tell you a secret? Never do what I was doing. One thing you should never do when you have patent shoes, make sure your patent pair of shoes do not touch the felt bag. Why? Because it can start to melt and it can stain your patent shoe. So you can imagine that I almost, almost had a fit. Louboutin shoes, they do have half sizes. So you do have like 37, 37.5, 38, 38.5, and it does vary. So it's very, of course, it's very important. If you're going to make this move, if you're going on for a Louboutin, make sure you do try on all the sizes. I mean, half size above what you think is your size, half size below what you think is your size because the heel really interferes in that, in molding. Now look at this heel, the movement. As I told you before, walking 
is something that really makes a difference for well-designed shoes. This pair of shoes, when you're wearing it and you walk with them, they move. So again, if you look at the front, you have a very classic kind of a peep toe, but at the back, it makes all the difference. And of course, the profile as well. When we talk about, look at how fragile, but yet how I am doing a lot of strength in here, how very much secure this is. Look the delicacy of these buckles. Exactly graffiti brown. Brown, no black, I'm sorry. Never seen a graffiti brown. Well, look at this sewing here. You have the stitches making the detail. Why is this? So that if your if your heels are dirty, it will not get dirt? Of course not, because over here is clean and clear. So it is just to show you how professional, how accurate they are when doing this job. You have this detail here, and in the inside, again, to assure you, can you see it here inside? To assure you that it's, it's clean, always with this clean kind of, you know, um, value, well done. Because if it was something like kind of clumsy in a clear color, in a light color, you would see all the little grumpiness of glue or of whatever that they, they would have inside to make it soft. It's not the case. Okay, now, have you ever seen pattern made in spikes? Look at that. They tried to make a leopard on this with micro spikes. Well, one very important thing for, for us to, to see in here in this construction is that these little uh, spikes, they are all hand attached to this upper piece of the shoe. How do I know it? Because there is no such a machine that can get so close and do it all together. Therefore, only a man, I mean, a human person can do it. So when we talk about luxury, it is very important that we remember that at some point in a luxury product, there is this hands-on thing. So it's due to heritage. One passes after the other. You become an apprentice till you are a professional. And talking about professionality, I have to tell you that here inside, I do not feel anything of metal. So they do attach it, but then they line it up with some leather, very soft leather, and then with another one. And all this is attached and glued to a first sole that is underneath this one. How is that? Yes. And do you see this? 
little kind of bumpy thing here. Do you see it? That it's kind of slanted? Well, this has all been sanded. So that will be very thin and easy to attach and get glued to the sole. Again, look how thin this is. This is really thin and it does not stick out. It's really very well glued. Again, as I showed you before, this little detail to show they can do it. You also see these little details in men's shoes when you're talking about Italian shoes. Now, you're seeing that I have two straps here. Look at the delicacy of these elastic bands. Are you seeing it? Very delicate. We have them on both sides. I'm showing you all these details because for sure you might be wondering, gosh, aren't all shoes like that? By this time, you know, they are not all shoes are like that with all this amount of detailed expertise that came from a long, long historical legacy. And plus, all these details that he designed. Because you have to be really creative. Do you imagine where the inspiration for these shoes came from? Any guess? Dinosaurs. I thought they were kind of punk because they do look kind of a that Mohican, right? Mohawk. Mohawk. Punk thing. But, well, he said they came from dinosaurs. What I think it is fantastic about this is that you cannot tell where this detail is sewn right here on this heel. And I've had it for a long time and it does not lose its shape. It's there. This one looks really heavy. Let's see what it is. Oh, I just read the name because I must say that every Louboutin creation has a name and when he gets himself inspired he looks upwards as if he was you know receiving some kind of information and he starts drawing the air once i asked him well you said that tokyo would be a boot if it were a pair of shoes what about if brazil were a pair of shoes and then he started well around the leg wouldn't be a shoe would be sandals yes soft muslin and and then he went on creating this and remember i told you he started with love now look at these sandals they form a heart these heels when they are together they form a heart isn't that wonderful? Now think about this as a construction. You have the soul. Inside of it, you have, again, soul. And it is called suhso, like, like on your tiptoes. And then inside, red. Does it look a bit like fetish to you? Me too. In fact, Louboutin is known for 
flirting a lot with this fetish world, dancers, and Philippe Berger. He's, he has actually made collections for Philippe Berger, where he loves to go. As, you know, a young teenager, a young adult, he would always go there and peep. Actually, he's really known for his peep shoes and his peep toe sandals. It's always like a little glimpse of sexiness will do the difference. As I told you before, he wants women to stand out and he really makes such an effort to help us on this. This one, I have to say, I won't lie to you, it's quite heavy, but it grounds you, so it's okay. Never have I ever twisted my feet when walking on a Louboutin. So there is a construction really carefully thought about and made here. Let's get another one. Oh, you will love this one. When he went to and then to the painting world. You know where he got this from? Matisse. Henri Matisse, the painter. This part was inspired by this French painter. And then he made it. For me, it looks like a bit like comics. It has a lot of fun. It gives me also these shades. It gives me a kind of a pop. So it looks a bit like pop art. Again, the hill, very well worked out. And they are comfortable. The thing is, if you have narrow feet, they will embrace you really well. If your feet are larger or higher, you will have to ask for counseling and maybe buy half size larger. Then you will get this comfort that you're looking for. Evidently, they are not running shoes. They are not sneakers, but he's got sneakers. I think it's very much unfair when people refer to Louboutin just by saying it is like, oh, the red cells, they kill us. They... Can't dump out. I don't think it's fair because there is a lot in these shoes. A lot of design, a lot of quality, and these platforms. Remember I said the other one was really heavy? I do not find these very heavy, and plus, they are not very difficult to walk on, because if you realize the size of this platform, and you measure it up here, you end up with a piece that's not so high. They really grab your feet and make you feel stable. These were the favorites of influencers and bloggers for a long, long time. How, what are they called? Alta Vicky. Out of from high in Italian. So you have the beige and you have the black. I have never seen in another color, just beige and black. Oh, talking about beige, Louboutin once made a pair of shoes this color, I just shown you, uh, that people said it, it was nude and then he showed it to a friend of his. And she said, oh, beige. He said, no, nude. She said, not my nude. 
and then this led him to make first of all it was five shades of nude now i think they are kind of nine or seven shades of nude that he's got in his collection because nude is something quite tricky a very very simple thing but with a lot of design as i told you if the idea is to elongate your legs and your body and give you a certain posture all these cuts are meant to help you on that silhouette construction therefore i have to say there is a lot of design in here because he says that he tries them in place at the factory at least twice to come up with the perfect cut shape for it finally last but not least I don't know if you're noticing, we, we kind of traveled around various materials and that was really my goal, to show you that no matter the material, the quality remains the same, there is design, there is this careful doing of things, which I can assure you lasts and does make a difference and then finally one of my passions inspired in a drawing that he made inspired in street art the spare boots i love street art i don't know if you like it but it's full of like words like cheers and then you have his signature with a with a little um, star that he usually does. And what else? It is a kind of a, oh yes, it is um, embroidered. You have tiny, it's tiny uh, paillette here. So it's very intricate. And look at the detail of this zipper. And inside, it's really easy to, to, to wear because, ah, one thing, look at, it starts getting higher from here. So if you're, again, if you have high feet, it is very important. For you to look at this at this length and where it starts coming up so you have a lot of lucky charms in here yeah i feel i love these i wear them at home at times but i've never worn them outside because i'm so in love with them i always fear them well I, I love to collect shoes and it's true that if you are if you collect something it's true that you don't want to use everything you want to have something that you kind of like I know it sounds weird but after all if you like something and you work for it why not I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope really you have understood that design plus creation plus heritage expertise on doing things can really give you good products. Nowadays we are living times in which maybe it's not a good idea to consume hell of, hell of a lot of things but you have to get what's good quality stay with us bye
Oh, and if you like this, please check positive, subscribe. We are always here. Thank you.